compassionate. He loved people. He loved the environment. Independent. He was a very self-sufficient individual. Adventurous. He wanted to travel and see the world. Three words that David McAllister's mom, Marilyn, says sum him up perfectly. Because he was a very, very deep thinker. A lot of people used to tell him he had an old soul. He was someone Christina Williams came to quickly count on. I met David when I worked at the deli. David was the type of person you could call any time of the day. Night, didn't matter. She says that he was always outside. They used to walk the park and just talk. We had a lot of conversations about his mom, his brothers, his dad, his family. But family and friends say that for David, feeling deeply came with a downside. We all struggle with things. And I think that David was trying to find a different path. A nice guy who struggled with depression, but loved everybody, wanted to be loved by everybody, acceptance, super open to people. Scott Petrie, a longtime friend and travel companion, says David wrestled with his feelings, using substances to numb the pain. His mom says they talked often about his struggles. David was one of my best friends. He, he told me everything. I mean, more stuff than I wanted to know. He, he and I were so close that we used to sit out in the front yard and talk for hours and hours. Marilyn says David entered treatment for substance use in 2015. And afterwards, he set out to travel the country, trekking from Kansas to Colorado, mainly by hitchhiking. His friend Scott meeting up with him in Arizona. It was a lot of walking, but really, you know, just uh, just hanging out in a lot of different ways. Uh, we talked about a lot of stuff. You know, obviously we partied a little bit, just enjoyed the new locations, learning about things, meeting people. But Scott says his substance use problems caught up with him and left him vulnerable. So when he went to uh, Florida and other places he was before, like Kansas City and stuff, he was with a lot of other people doing a lot of other stuff. And in December of 2016, David made the decision to go home and make changes. I think he was just really realizing that the pathway he was on was not a, not a good one. He was cleaning up, he had a job. He seemed to be going in a very good direction when he went missing. Around 4 a.m. Thursday, May 11, 2017, Marilyn woke up to a text that David sent telling her he'd not be going to work and that he needed some space. I had called him and talked to him and he just, I guess he was just trying to clear his head, is what he said. Um, and I remember asking him if he would be home that evening and he said he would. David had left early in the morning, bringing only a phone, his backpack, and a Bible. By mid-afternoon, he wasn't answering his phone. His phone was going directly to voicemail. It was off. I mean, that was unlike him. His phone last pinged at Vanderveer Park, but friends and family say a known substance dealer was with him that day and dropped him off at a pizza shop near Jungie Park. But where he went after that is unknown. That's what concerns me because I know that he would never just leave without telling me goodbye. There's no way. So where did he go? David's friend Scott says he saw David just days before his disappearance, appearing to be in an altered state. So I was coming home from work, and he was walking down the street, uh, shoes off. But he had a limp, like a, a very weird limp. A study by the National Institute on Drug Abuse concluded that 40 to 60 percent of individuals who get treatment for substance abuse relapse within their first year. But the study goes on to say that relapse does not mean failure in a person's recovery. It's time and effort that make success. It's not completely clear if David relapsed in the days before he disappeared. What is known is that he put an effort to recover, and it's time that he needed to heal. Yes, he could have had a setback. Yes, he could have made mistakes. Um, but he was working really hard on getting his life together and making sure that he was going in the right direction. I feel like Bettendorf detectives failed. I think that they look at David like, meh, another troubled kid, another addict, but that wasn't him. David's friends and family feel strongly that someone out there has more information that will lead to him, no matter what. I do believe there is somebody out there somewhere who knows what happened. For whatever reason, they're just afraid to come forward. Maybe they had something to do with it, maybe they didn't. I wonder if he's cold, I wonder if he's hungry. I just need to find him one way or the other. Some days are really bad and you have a hard time concentrating on anything else can't say there's really been a day that's gone by that i don't think about it or think about him i love you come home